Jax leaned back against the cold metal plating of the hangar bay, grease staining his overalls as he watched the sleek diplomatic shuttle glide through the vast docking port. Another day, another pretentious dignitary touching down on Gateway Station. He squinted, catching the glint of chrome off the vessel's hull. Standard Sandarian design, nothing special there. Boredom settled over him like a shroud. Life as a mechanic on the station had lost its luster. Sure, the pay was decent, and patching up battered freighters or glitching mining bots paid the bills, but it was monotonous. Jax longed for a challenge, a chance to unleash the full creative force that churned relentlessly beneath the surface. But the steady stream of predictable tech that rolled through the station offered him nothing of the sort. His skills, honed across hundreds of makeshift repairs and inspired late-night tinkering sessions, screamed for a canvas worthy of his talent. A pompous voice jolted him from his reverie. I assume this is the best maintenance facility your primitive station has to offer? Jax turned, blinking in the harsh hangar lights, and found himself sizing up an alien who could have stepped straight out of a hollow drama. Tall and slender, with iridescent scales and an air of self-importance that clung to him like an expensive perfume, the alien sniffed disdainfully at his surroundings. Ambassador Rizal, Jax drawled, offering a half-hearted salute. Welcome to Gateway Station, and yes, you're looking at the best damn mechanic this side of the Milky Way. The ambassador's elongated brow arched skeptically. Your reputation precedes you, then? I must confess I've never heard the name Jackson Varen mentioned in the galactic engineering circles I frequent. Jack shrugged, biting back a wry retort. Small-time mechanics on backwater space stations didn't tend to get invited to those sorts of parties. Word travels slow, Ambassador. Now, about your shuttle. Ambassador Rizal gestured dismissively towards the gleaming vessel. A minor engine calibration is required. I trust this is a task your rudimentary tools can handle. Jack's fingers twitched. Rudimentary? He'd show this pompous gas bag what rudimentary could do. A mischievous grin spread across his face. Calibration, huh? You got a few hours to spare, Ambassador? Because I have a feeling that shuttle of yours could use a little more than just a tune-up. Ambassador Rizal narrowed his eyes, suspicion evident in the tightening of his jawline. I have important negotiations scheduled. I cannot afford unnecessary delays. Relax, Ambassador, Jax chuckled. I'm not talking about a complete overhaul, just, you know, a few tweaks, improvements. The Ambassador's skepticism deepened. Improvements? Zandarian vessels are the pinnacle of engineering. What could a human mechanic possibly offer? Jax bristled, pride stinging at the dismissive tone. He was tired of humans being treated like backwater primitives, but instead of lashing out, he forced his features into a mask of nonchalance. How about a friendly wager, Ambassador? Give me three hours with your shuttle. If it doesn't impress you, well, I'll clean every air filter on this station for free. Now it was Rizal's turn to grin, a flash of sharp teeth that made Jax's skin crawl. Very well, human. I accept your challenge, but if you fail to enhance my vessel, your species' reputation shall suffer the consequences. A shiver ran down Jax's spine. The galactic powers held a precarious balance, and any slight, real, or perceived could have devastating ripple effects. But he met the ambassador's gaze with unwavering confidence. Deal. With a flourish, Ambassador Rizal handed over a security code that granted access to the shuttle systems. Do not disappoint me, Jackson Varen, he hissed, a hint of anticipation now mingling with his disdain. Or perhaps the rumors of human inferiority hold more truth than I suspect. As the ambassador swept away, Jax felt a surge of both excitement and trepidation. This wasn't just about proving his skills anymore. It was about demonstrating the hidden brilliance of humanity. Rubbing his grease-stained hands together, he strode towards the shuttle, his mind racing with possibilities. The hangar doors sealed behind him, plunging him into semi-darkness punctuated by the soft glow of the shuttle's internal lights. Jax ran a hand along its smooth, aerodynamic hull, a sense of awe washing over him despite the ambassador's arrogance. Zandarian tech was undeniably elegant, but beneath that sleek surface, Jax saw untapped potential. It was time to unleash it. Jax wasted no time. Bypassing the standard diagnostics, he tapped directly into the shuttle's core operating system. 
To the untrained eye, it would be a dizzying jumble of code, a complex and near incomprehensible language. But for Jax, it was a beautiful mess, waiting to be rearranged into a symphony of mechanical mastery. His fingers danced across an old interface pad, ancient text scavenged from a derelict freighter. He worked with a frantic energy, fueled by the thrill of the challenge and the sting of Rizal's insult. This wasn't just tinkering, it was a duel, a battle of wits and ingenuity. First, the power core. Zendarian engines were known for their efficiency, but they lacked raw aggression. Drawing inspiration from the patched-up mining bots he'd repaired countless times, Jax overhauled the energy distribution protocols, pushing the limits of what the hardware could safely handle. This alone would shave minutes off standard travel times. Next, the navigation systems. While Zendarian ships boasted cutting-edge mapping software, their algorithms were often rigid and overly cautious. Jax dug into his toolbox, unearthing a custom-built AI subroutine he'd designed on a rainy afternoon just for the fun of it. It was experimental, unpredictable, and probably a very bad idea under normal circumstances, but this was no normal flight. He spliced his AI into the navigation grid, the shuttle's systems momentarily stuttering in surprise at the unexpected intrusion. With a mischievous grin, Jax coaxed his creation to life. He'd programmed it with a hunger for shortcuts, a willingness to take calculated risks. The resulting hybrid system was as alien to the shuttle as it was to him, a thrilling and potentially volatile mix. Time was slipping away. Jax dove into the weapon systems, more out of a habit than any intent of truly arming the shuttle. A diplomatic vessel this size wouldn't have much to offer, but as he skimmed through the basic laser protocols, a spark of inspiration ignited. He began toying with the firing sequences, subtly tweaking power distribution and targeting parameters. By the time he was done, the shuttle would be able to unleash a dazzlingly intricate light show, far more impressive than any standard armament. A little flare, perfect for intimidating negotiations or just showing off. A warning beep jolted him back to reality. Three hours were up. Jax leaned back, sweat plastering his hair to his forehead, a wide grin splitting his face. This shuttle wasn't just improved, it was transformed. He just hoped he hadn't transformed it into a pile of space debris. The hangar doors slid open, bathing the shuttle in harsh fluorescent light. Ambassador Rizal returned, his movements filled with a calculated grace that masked his impatience. Well, human, shall I be expecting my shuttle to perform backflips and recite poetry now? Jax grinned, wiping his hands on a rag. Uh, maybe not poetry, Ambassador, but I think you're going to like what it does. The Ambassador followed him onto the boarding ramp, his skeptical gaze sweeping over the shuttle. It looked exactly the same. There appears to be no change. Looks can be deceiving, my friend. Jax gestured towards the pilot's chair. Why don't you see for yourself? Rizal hesitated, then reluctantly settled into the plush seat. Under normal circumstances, he would never entrust his ship to an alien mechanic, let alone a human. But the wager had been made, and curiosity, however distasteful, was now gnawing at his composure. Jack slid into the co-pilot's chair, his heart pounding an excited rhythm in his chest. Buckle up, Ambassador. This is going to be a bumpy ride. The engines roared to life, their familiar hum subtly deeper, infused with a newfound power. The shuttle lifted smoothly off the dock floor, and within moments they were soaring through the inky blackness of space. Standard departure sequence, Rizal noted, trying and failing to sound unimpressed. Just wait for it, Jax replied, his voice edged with a tremor of anticipation. Following the plotted course, they approached a dense asteroid field. Instead of initiating the usual cautious maneuvers, Jax nudged the controls. To his delight, his AI subroutine awoke with a hungry growl. The shuttle swerved suddenly, not slowing down, but charting a twisting path through the asteroid field. Rizo gasped, his grip tightening on the armrest. The proximity alarms were blaring, but Jax ignored them, trusting the hybrid navigation, the shuttle responding to his commands with electrifying precision. They hurtled through, sensors registering near misses that sent a thrill of exhilaration down Jax's spine. Where a Zandarian pilot would have slowed down or retreated, his creation saw only opportunity a maze to be conquered at breakneck speed. When they burst free of the asteroid field, Ambassador Rizal was pale, scales shimmering between shades of shock and outrage. Lunatic, he hissed. You nearly destroyed us! Jax chuckled, 
the adrenaline still coursing through his veins. Relax, Ambassador. Didn't I promise you an improvement? He glanced at the chrono. Check the sector time. We shaved a full six minutes off the standard Zandarian route. Rizal was silent, furiously accessing the ship's logs, his mouth twisted into a frown deepened by the second. This... this is impossible. Th these maneuvers, the risk calculations... Yeah, a normal Zandarian pilot would never attempt those. But guess what? I ain't Zandarian. And this sure as hell ain't no standard shuttle anymore. Jax couldn't suppress the triumphant grin spreading across his face. You like fast? Because now we're talking about real speed. The ambassador's frown slowly morphed into something akin to grudging admiration. The rest of the journey was punctuated by Rizal's sharp intakes of breath as Jack unleashed the full potential of the improved shuttle. Dizzying spins, breathtaking climbs, and controlled falls that made Rizal bite back a scream. Every maneuver pushed the boundaries of what the Ambassador had thought possible. And then there was the little light show that Jax had programmed on a whim. A press of a button and the once intimidating laser systems burst not with destructive force, but into a swirling, dancing tapestry of brilliant emerald light against the backdrop of space. It was utterly ridiculous, utterly useless and Rizal found himself chuckling in disbelief at the sheer audacity of it. By the time they touched back down at Gateway Station, the Ambassador was a changed alien. Gone was the arrogance, replaced by a grudging awe that struggled against his deeply ingrained sense of superiority. Unorthodox, he finally muttered, disembarking from the shuttle with a newfound respect in his bearing, and undeniably effective. Effective? We practically rewrote the rule book. Jax beamed. Relief and triumph surged through him, washing away the last remnants of doubt. Rizal inclined his head ever so slightly. I confess, Jackson Varen, you have surpassed my expectations. There was a subtle shift in his voice, a tentative dropping of the earlier disdain. My apologies for underestimating human ingenuity. Jax's victory grin faltered. Apologies? Man... You don't even know what you've done. A flicker of curiosity crossed the ambassador's face. What do you mean? Jackson leaned against the now gleaming hull of the shuttle. You think this is just about you getting some hotshot pilot moves, don't you? Don't you see what this means on a bigger scale? The words tumbled out of him, propelled by the years of stifled frustration and restless dreams. This is about collaboration, ambassador. What if Zandarian tech met human ingenuity on every level? Imagine the ships we could build, the problems we could solve, together. Rizal stood silent, his iridescent scales reflecting the dim lights of the hangar. Then, he did something truly unexpected. He laughed, a harsh barking sound that softened into genuine amusement. You humans, so relentless in your optimism, such boundless, often reckless ambition. The ambassador's gaze settled back on the shuttle a flicker of something new dancing in his eyes. Possibility. Your proposal has merit. My report to the Zandarian Council shall include an unexpected addendum. Jax couldn't suppress a triumphant whoop. Maybe he hadn't just tinkered with an engine today. Maybe he had tinkered with the future. As he watched the ambassador stride away, back straight and purpose in his step, Jax felt a flicker of that restless energy return. One shuttle one overconfident alien. That was just the beginning. A whole galaxy of possibilities was just waiting out there, ripe for improvement, begging for a human touch. Now, if he could just convince his new friend Rizal to let him loose on the rest of the fleet. Word of Jax's mechanical genius spread through Gateway Station like wildfire, first in whispers, then in excited chatter echoing through the mess halls and corridors. Initially met with a mix of skepticism and amusement, the rumors were swiftly confirmed. It turned out that Ambassador Rizal's enhanced shuttle wasn't just a hot rod, it was a catalyst fueling a change in the perception of humanity in the vast tapestry of galactic society. Rizal's detailed report to the Zandarian Council painted a surprising picture of audacious innovation and untapped collaborative potential. The rigid, almost formulaic nature of Zandarian technology was subtly criticized. A hint that their unwavering reliance on efficiency and protocol had perhaps stifled a degree of creative exploration. Jackson Varen was framed not as a backwater mechanic, 
but as a harbinger of an unexpected paradigm shift, a symbol of the potential of a species often dismissed as unrefined and unpredictable. The response from the Council was cautious, yet undeniably intrigued. While no one proposed a full-blown alliance, galactic politics were a treacherous beast, a small-scale exchange program was proposed. Selected Zandarian engineers would visit Gateway Station and other designated human-populated hubs to study and collaborate with their human counterparts. It was tentative, a toe-dipping experiment, but it was a start. A crack in the carefully maintained image of Zandarian superiority. Jax, of course, became something of a celebrity overnight. His once humble workshop was now a bustling center of activity. Zandarian engineers, with their haughty pride carefully masked behind an air of studied curiosity, watched with a mixture of fascination and disorientation as he disassembled their pristine tech and rebuilt it with his own chaotic flair. He, in turn, discovered precision and elegance behind designs he'd initially judged as overly sleek. There were stumbles, of course. His experimental AI nearly caused a diplomatic incident when it decided to improve the station-wide ventilation system and inadvertently caused a temporary havoc in the ambassadorial quarters. Cultural nuances still led to misunderstandings, and the language barrier proved maddening. But what emerged was a sense of chaotic, messy, and ultimately exhilarating cross-pollination. In one particularly memorable instance, Jax and a young Zandarian engineer named Talira spent two sleepless days and nights locked in the workshop, furiously debating the optimal method for overclocking a starship reactor. At the brink of both exhaustion and a breakthrough, they emerged, eyes bloodshot and hair disheveled, sporting a monstrosity of a hybrid solution that was three times more powerful than the original and five times more likely to explode on first ignition. That, at least, was what the data predicted. Jax cheerfully shrugged as he strapped himself into a safety harness. It wouldn't be progress if it wasn't completely safe, would it? Life on Gateway Station wasn't just about tech anymore. The influx of Zandarians and the increased spotlight on humans created a fascinating clash of cultures. The station's grimy, utilitarian corridors now occasionally hosted elegant displays of shimmering Zandarian artwork, baffling to some, yet strangely captivating. The once predictable menus in the mess hall now featured experimental fusion dishes that were either culinary breakthroughs or barely digestible disasters. Jax, thrust into the role of an unofficial liaison, found himself mediating heated philosophical debates in a makeshift tavern built from repurposed shipping containers. Over mugs of lukewarm synth ale, he patiently explained human concepts like artistic license and calculated risk while bewildered Zandarians tried to fathom the allure of extreme sports and sarcastic humor. There were plenty of eye rolls, exasperated sighs, and moments where understanding seemed hopelessly out of reach. But there were also bursts of laughter, impromptu jam sessions where Zandarian string compositions collided with earth blues, and late-night debates over the true meaning of progress. It wasn't always harmonious. News reached them of isolated incidents on other stations and outposts where the shift in power, even a small one, stirred up resentment, and age-old prejudices bubbled to the surface. The fragility of this newfound intergalactic experiment hung in the balance. Yet, with each successful collaboration, each time a human design subroutine improved the efficiency of a Zandarian medical scanner or a Zandarian security protocol foiled an opportunistic smuggling ring, that balance tilted ever so slightly further in favor of acceptance. Even Ambassador Reisel, whose initial return to Gateway Station was fraught with barely-veiled skepticism, began to grudgingly admit that the program had, against all odds, proven beneficial. Jax never lost his drive to tweak, improve, and push against boundaries. Now, though his shop echoed with new voices, new questions, and shared ambition that stretch far beyond any individual accomplishment, it was, as he often said, while elbow deep in a tangle of wires and half-dismantled tech, a goddamn beautiful mess. And the galaxy slowly but surely was beginning to agree. The years turned into a whirlwind. New collaborations, unexpected friendships, a few spectacular failures that somehow always led to even more spectacular breakthroughs. The program expanded, drawing in other species intrigued by the ripple effects of this unlikely human-Zandarian partnership. 
Gateway Station, once a middling backwater port, became a hotbed of innovation, a place where the improbable was always just around the corner. Jax, despite his initial reluctance, found himself something of a figurehead, his messy brilliance now grudgingly acknowledged force. He held lectures that mixed baffling slang, half-baked theoretical rants, and moments of pure genius. At first intended only for eager young engineers, his audiences swelled to include seasoned diplomats, cautious scientists, and even the occasional wide-eyed youngling who'd heard the tales of the infamous grease-stained human who talked to machines. One particularly memorable lecture ended in a near riot when Jax unveiled his latest pet project, a vehicle framework for FTL travel that relied on a series of precisely triggered micro-explosions to warp space-time. He hadn't tested it, of course, and the calculations were, by his own admission, a bit dodgy, but the sheer audacity set the lecture hall ablaze with a chaotic mix of appalled shrieks, odd gas, and frantic note-taking. It was Ambassador Reisel, oddly enough, who restored order, standing amidst the chaos with a severity that echoed his old arrogance. He silenced the crowd with a simple statement that sent chills down Jax's spine. You might be witnessing the early and extremely dangerous stages of the next leap in interstellar exploration. Pay attention. Of course, it wasn't all about the big flashy ideas. In fact, some of the most profound changes came from the small, the overlooked, a team consisting of a human sanitation engineer and a meticulous Zandarian waste processor redesigned the station's recycling system, increasing its efficiency by a staggering amount. A quiet human botanist, inspired by delicate Zendarian floral symbiosis, revolutionized hydroponics, leading to a flourishing edible garden in most of the barren outposts. Jax himself never let go of his hands-on roots. His workshop remained his sanctuary, the scent of ozone and hot metal his most comforting aromatherapy. The quiet satisfaction of fixing a malfunctioning food replicator, of coaxing life back into a battered drone, continued to ground him even as he found himself debating theoretical economics with galactic dignitaries. It was a constant reminder, no matter how complex things got, sometimes the greatest challenge was simply making something work. Yet amidst the progress, shadows remained. Not everyone shared the spirit of collaboration and the excitement of discovery. Rumors swirled of fringe Zandarian traditionalists, angered by what they saw as a dilution of their technological dominance, and on the other side, opportunistic human corporations eyed the new alliances warily, sensing profit but fearing a loss of control. One day, the tension erupted. A seemingly routine trade delegation arrived at Gateway Station, bearing not exotic goods or promising tech, but a team of highly paid lawyers and a series of chilling demands. Their target? Jax and his workshop. The accusations ranged from reckless endangerment to patent theft all the way to outlandish claims of inciting galactic instability. The legal jargon washed over Jax like a tidal wave, leaving him cold and disoriented. This wasn't about better engines or faster starships, this was a fight for the very soul of the work he'd done. Ambassador Reisel's scale seemed to darken in fury when he found out. His influence, potent as it was, hit a wall of bureaucracy and backroom deals. The human corporations involved had deep pockets and even deeper connections, pulling strings that stretch far beyond the station. For the first time in years, a chilling sense of despair edged its way into Jax's heart. But he wasn't alone. Without being asked, his workshop overflowed with allies, Zendarian engineers with furrowed brows muttering amongst themselves about legal loopholes and unexpected code vulnerabilities. Wide-eyed students who'd followed his haphazard lectures and now fiercely jotted down notes with a determined glint in their eyes, and even a few seasoned traders who'd seen firsthand how his tinkering had opened up new opportunities and honest profit. It became clear that this wasn't merely a lawsuit, but a battleground. It was control versus innovation, profit versus potential. For sleepless nights, the workshop became both a refuge and a war room. Papers were parsed, strategies were debated, and a desperate, audacious plan emerged. The day of the hearing dawned, the sterile courtroom a stark contrast to his workshop's organized chaos. The corporation's lawyers, polished and smug, laid out their case with precision. Jack sat hunched, feeling years older, his once vibrant work now threatened to be dissected and confined. And then, the tide turned. His scrappy, brilliant, and fiercely loyal team materialized, armed not with legal texts, but with demonstrations. 
A medical scanner, its life extended threefold with a jury rig patch up job, an improved comm system that could now bypass corporate controlled channels, and finally, a small, unassuming drone that suddenly burst to life with speed and agility far surpassing its original specifications. The courtroom erupted in a symphony of gas and furiously scribbled notes. The jury's faces shifted from disinterest to astonishment, and the corporation's lawyers stammered, their carefully crafted arguments crumbling in the face of tangible, undeniable results. The hearing was over before it truly began. Jackson's work, his relentless, tinkering spirit had triumphed, not out of legal precedent, but from a bold, heartfelt demonstration of what his kind of brilliance could offer. Victory, though sweet, was fleeting. The lawsuit had been a warning shot, a reminder that the forces of tradition and profit would not fade without a fight. News poured in, sabotage on frontier research stations, Zandarian design tech suddenly malfunctioning on human-run installations. The fragile threads of collaboration were fraying, deliberately strained by fear and greed on both sides. Jax felt a familiar restlessness settle upon him. It was more than just the urge to tinker, it was a deep-seated desire to protect to nurture the fragile thing they'd built. The galaxy was on the brink of something remarkable, yet as always, fear of the unknown held it back. One evening, he found Ambassador Rizal perched precariously in a crate in his workshop, the alien looking both lost and oddly determined. The ambassador's iridescent scales shimmered with a barely concealed worry as he turned a delicate piece of Zandarian sensor tech in his hands. We may have ignited a fire, Rizal murmured, but we have not accounted for the wind. Jax nodded grimly, the weight of responsibility settling heavy on his shoulders. Yeah, he said, and it looks like a big damn storm is brewing. It was the moment, however unspoken, when a bold and perhaps reckless plan began to take shape. It wasn't just about fixing tech anymore or designing faster ships. They needed to change minds, to show both humans and Zandarians and any other doubters out there what unity could achieve in the face of the unknown. There was one way to do it, a feat both monumental and breathtakingly risky, an act of creation that would either cement the fragile alliance or ignite a conflict that would ripple across the stars. They would build a new station, not just an outpost or a trading hub, but a symbol, a shining beacon designed and built collaboratively from the ground up, a testament to the potential of combined brilliance. It would be risky, audacious, and require an unprecedented level of trust. They would be putting not just their work, but their very lives in each other's hands. Yet, amidst the looming storm, it seemed the only path forward. In the weeks and months that followed, Jax found himself not only tweaking engines, but forging connections. Old rivalries were laid aside as brilliant but reclusive Zandarian scientists were coaxed from the pristine labs with the promise of resources and freedom to pursue those implausible ideas. Human engineers used to backroom deals and corporate bureaucracy found themselves swept up in a project where the only currency was ingenuity, and the only deadline was that imposed by their shared ambition. The new station, a marvel of interwoven Zandarian elegance and resilient human design, slowly began to take shape on the edge of a remote system, and as it grew, so too did the ripple effects. Fear and suspicion began to ebb, replaced by something else, a desperate, fragile hope. It was a beacon, a declaration, and perhaps their last, best shot at proving that the future wasn't about dominance, but about daring to create something better, together. The final stage approached with a heart-stopping blend of terror and exhilaration. The new station christened Horizon with a wry grin by Jax, pulsed with a vibrant life even before it was truly operational. Corridors, once sterile, echoed with the percussive beat of human work songs mingling with the precise hum of Zandarian construction bots. Shared lab spaces thumbed with an energy that crackled, an exchange of perspectives and problem-solving that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. Jax himself was a blur of motion, fixing, recalibrating, and cursing with equal gusto. He spent sleepless nights huddled over schematics with Talira, the brilliant young Zandarian engineer who now moved through the half-finished station like she belonged there, her once pristine scales bearing the same telltale smudges of grease and determination. The day of activation dawned, bathing the station in the cold light of a distant star. Jack stood beside Rizal on a makeshift observation platform, the weight of countless eyes, both human and Zandarian, focused on their small patch of metal and wires. 
We have done the impossible, it seems, Rizal murmured, an unnerving touch of awe in his usually rigid voice. But now, will it work? With a dry chuckle, Jax replied, I don't know about working, but she sure as hell gonna do something. He triggered the activation sequence. For one agonizing heartbeat, silence stretched. Then, Horizon shuddered into life. Power coursed through its veins, not with a surge, but a roar of defiance. A testament to the audacious spirit woven into its very core. Lights flared, systems roared online, and a dazzling shockwave of pure, unfiltered energy rippled outwards, briefly outshining the nearby sun. Monitors across a dozen systems shrieked in protest, then settled into a stunned chorus of blinking lights and disbelieving readings. Scientists clamored, politicians postured, and news feeds blazed with sensationalized headlines declaring either the dawn of a new era or the fiery herald of galactic doom. Amidst the chaos, Jax just laughed. It was a giddy, exhausted laugh filled with the echoes of past failures and the sweet burn of hard-won success. Rizal, his scales flashing an unreadable pattern of emotions, slowly nodded and then extended a clawed hand. Jax clasped it without hesitation. A human mechanic and a Zandarian ambassador, their grip sealing a pact forged in grease, ambition, and a stubborn, reckless belief that sometimes, just sometimes, the truly impossible might be within reach. Horizon, flawed, brilliant, and defiantly alive, pulsed against the backdrop of the cosmos. It was a beacon, a dare, an invitation. The galaxy had its answer. Now it was up to the rest of them. Human and Zandarian and whoever else wished to join to decide what came next.